This is Dr. David Shine, and welcome to Business Law 101. We want to focus on the definition. So you've got a bilateral contract. This is what we expect as business people. You want services from a business, they want your money. We agree to buy the services, we agree to pay a certain amount, they give us the services, we give them the money. That's pretty straightforward. Whether it's your uh, internet contract or your cell phone contract or the lease for your office, that's a bilateral contract. Now, there's an oddity in the law called a unilateral contract. These are not ever common in business, but the best example I can come up for, with is uh, a kid next door comes over to your house and says, hey, Mr. Jones, your grass looks a little high. Um, if I cut your grass, would you give me $25? Now, if you say, yes, I'll give you $25, you've made a bilateral contract. But if you just shrug your shoulders, you don't accept the contract, then the next door neighbor cuts the grass anyway and comes to you for the 25 bucks, he's completed a unilateral contract. The agreement has been done by performance, not by acceptance. So it's an oddball deal, but I want you to be familiar with the terminology here uh, as opposed to whether it's a good idea as business people. So um, one of the things that uh, we want you to also be familiar with is when there's not a contract, but there's a reason to act like there's a contract, and that is called a quasi-contract. And it says that the legal fiction that courts use to prevent wrongdoing and unjust enrichment of one party. Um, the best example of this, and I've been through this with some of my clients, is um, uh, in the greater Houston area, of course, we have massive companies like Shell Oil and Chevron, Marathon, uh, the uh, Halliburton, and so forth. And so sometimes these uh, big companies will go to a machine shop and I'm usually representing the little guys or some of these machine shops and they'll go to them and say, hey, we're going to need 40 pieces of something for our, one of our drilling rigs. And we're getting the contract, the purchase order put together right now. But in the meantime, because it's a rush deal, we need you to go buy 40 blank pieces of metal that you can machine next week when we give you the contract. So the machine shop in good conscience and relying on the verbal encouragement goes out and buys those 40 blank pieces of metal that are only good for this particular contract. And then a week later, the big company calls up and says, hey, I got bad news for you. Uh, uh, we did not get permission from purchasing department, so we're, are we, the deal was canceled. So we don't need those 40 things made, but the machine shop has in reasonable reliance purchased the, these 40 pieces of metal. Now in those cases, the machine shop is entitled to seek restitution so they won't be able to get lost profits in most cases, but they should at least be able to get reimbursed for the cost of the metal that they purchased in preparation for a contract that never happened. Now, the technical term for that is called quantum merowit. Quantum merowit is to make a party whole under an equitable concept. This is Dr. David D. Shine for Business Law 101. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite platform.